Welcome back everyone to our continued discussion of polynomial regression. Now that we understand the bias variance trade-off, including models that underfit or overfit, we can go back and adjust model parameters for polynomial regression, specifically what order we should choose for our polynomial feature set. So we're going to explore how to choose the optimal model complexity, that is the order of the polynomial, and luckily for us we can do this visually by measuring our error against the degree of complexity of the polynomial. As we previously discussed, we're going to need to understand the error for both the training and test data to look out for potential overfitting. Let's head back to the notebook and show you how it's done. All right, here we are back at the notebook. Previously, we went ahead and ran a model that was trained on the polynomial feature set. And overall, we saw that the performance for mean absolute error and root mean squared error was a lot better than our performance on just standard linear regression. Can we improve performance, however, by increasing the degree of the polynomial to an even higher number, like a third degree or even fourth degree polynomial? How can we actually do this? Well, what we can do is just simply create a loop that creates all those models for the various polynomial degrees, train them, calculate the error metrics for both our training data and our test data, and then visually see where we begin to spike on the test error and where we continue to decline on the training error. That way, we can choose the optimal polynomial degree without accidentally overfitting. We can do this with a loop, and the main steps for the loop are the following. The first step what we need to do is create the different order polynomial. The second step we want to do is split that particular poly set of polynomial features into a training set and test set. Then what we'll do is fit on the training data basically create a new model, fit it on the training data, and then store or save the root mean squared error or some sort of error term for both, whoops, for both the training set and the test set. The reason for that is if we only ran this and compared errors on the training set, then you're pretty much guaranteed that as you go higher and higher and higher in order of complexity, eventually you're going to keep getting lower and lower test training errors until you are basically perfectly fitting to your training data. What we want to do is also keep in mind our test data and make sure that we don't actually achieve that huge spike in error after a certain level of complexity. So after that, we'll simply plot the results and that will be the error versus the polynomial degree order. So let's go ahead and check this out. I'm going to create two lists. We'll just run this off root mean squared error. So we'll have a list that stores the train root mean squared errors, and we'll have another list that stores the root mean squared errors for the test set. And then we'll say for degree in range, and here's where we can choose any range we want. Obviously, the larger the range you test, the more degrees you take into account, but the longer the training time is going to be. Luckily, Linear regression on even really large polynomials is pretty fast on most modern computers, so it shouldn't be a big deal to choose kind of a really large degree set. Realistically, however, you probably wouldn't do a 10th degree polynomial on a data set that only has three features. This is really just for explanatory purposes to create a nice visualization at the end. So just keep that in mind. This is kind of overkill for what we're doing. Next, we're going to create the polynomial converter. So we'll say polyconverter is equal to the polynomial features, and then we'll say degree is equal to D. So essentially, D is going to be first one, then two, then three, then four, then so on, all the way to degree 10, which again, is kind of crazy, but it's just for visualization purposes. And we'll also say include bias equals false. So I don't need to calculate that bias term. And just so we can see the whole loop, I'm going to zoom out one level here. So I'm saying, for D in range 1 to 10, create that polynomial converter, and then what we need to do is actually create the polynomial feature set. So we'll say, just as we did before, essentially repeating all the steps, poly features is equal to poly converter, and then we can call fit transform to do it all in one step, and we're going to do it on the X data set. After that, we want to split this into a training test split. So what we can do is just scroll up here and just copy paste this line of our previous train test split. And we're essentially just repeating the exact same thing we just did, but now we're just doing it for multiple degrees. After that, we create a model. We can say model is equal to the linear regression model. 
and then we'll say model.fit and we'll fit it on the X training data and the Y train data. And so far we've created a different order polynomial. We split into a train test, then we fit on the training data and now we need to store and save the root mean squared error for both the training set and the test set. So to actually get the root mean squared error, that means we need to run predictions. And we're actually gonna run predictions on both X train and Y train. Again, the purpose for this is to make sure we're not overfitting because if I only did this on training set, I, would, I wouldn't actually know whether or not I was overfitting my model to the training data. So we'll say is train predictions is equal to model dot predict on X train. And then we can say test predict is equal model dot predict on X test. Then we're gonna simply calculate the error. So we can say train root mean squared error is equal to NP square root of the mean squared error given the Y test and the train prediction. Actually, this should be Y train since it should be compared to the training prediction. So make sure the train matches up with train and Y train matches up with train pred here. And then we should have test root mean squared error, which is going to be NP SQRT mean squared error. And then we're gonna run Y test against our test predictions. And then at the end, we simply store this by appending it to this list we created outside of the loop. Make sure these are outside of the loop, otherwise you'd be redefining them every time. So we can say train root mean squared errors dot append train root mean squared error and then test root mean squared errors append test root mean squared error. Okay, so pretty simple what we're doing here. It's just repeating all the steps we did for multiple degrees. So to keep track of the training error and the test error, I have these two lists. I create the polynomial feature set for some level of degree, which is defined here in this loop. Again, 10 is an extreme amount of degrees to be testing, but it's just for visualization purposes. Then we create that polynomial feature set, split it just as we did before, fit the model onto the training data, predict on both the training set and the test set, so I can get an idea of overfitting versus underfitting. Then we store that error term for both the training set and the test set by appending it to this list. So we'll go ahead and run this, make sure we didn't commit any typos. And it looks like it ran. So let's check out those lists. We're gonna say train root mean squared errors, run that. Looks like we have the errors. Notice that the training root mean squared errors pretty much go down, 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 down. There might be a spike sometimes, but in theory, if you run the complexity high enough, you should continually get lower and lower errors. The fact that it's spiking is kind of a red flag here that you definitely should not be going to this high of a polynomial if you're even spiking on the training data. But you'll note that even after a spike, like 5.42, you immediately drop down to 0.14 and 0.17. So obviously some extreme overfitting happening at really high polynomial levels. This will be even more apparent with the test root mean squared errors. If we check out that list, run it, you'll notice that after a while, you just start exploding in root mean squared error. Look at this one right here, absolutely exploding. Even though your root mean squared error on your training set was fantastic for that high of a polynomial. Let's plot this out so we can get an idea of what we're actually looking at. So we're gonna say PLT plot, and let's just go ahead and plot the first six so we can get an idea of where this spike is happening. I'm gonna say plot range, one to six, and then we'll say train root mean squared errors, colon five, and this is basically grabbing one, two, three, four, five, and this is grabbing the first five training errors, and let's give this a label of train root mean squared error, and then we can say plt dot legend. So this will just plot the training error, so you run that and you can see as your order of complexity increases, that's the degree of polynomial. So I can say PLT X label is degree of poly. And we'll say PLT Y label. Whoops, make sure we spell this right. PLT Y label is the root mean squared error. So clearly, as we increase the degree of the polynomial, our training root mean squared error does better and better. Well, what about the test error? 
we can say PLT plot, again, range, 1 to 6. So that's just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then we'll say test root mean squared errors. Go ahead and grab the first 5. And then we'll set this label equal to test root mean squared error. Run that. And so you can see that basically, as you begin to fit to higher degree polynomials, around the fourth degree is really where you start to see the test root mean squared error explode. And you can see that in the raw data itself. So you get good test error, root mean squared error, it's going down, and then all of a sudden it really starts increasing here, even as it decreases and continues improving on the training set. Now I mentioned going to a degree of 10 is kind of crazy for just three features. We wouldn't expect there to be some sort of relationship between x to the power of 10 for any of these, but this is just for visualization purposes. So let's go ahead and explore this, what it would look like if you took it out to some extreme level of complexity. And for that, we'll just do everything here. So no more indexing and explore this. And you'll notice that those initial explosions of root mean squared error on the test are nothing compared to the insane error you get on your test data as you go to some eighth or ninth degree polynomial here. And notice again that the training error is fantastic even at extreme degrees of polynomial, which makes sense because as you get more and more fit to your training data, you eventually overfit to your training data and eventually your error starts going more and more towards zero as you're picking up every single piece of noise and variance in that data set. So clearly we don't want to go up to some eighth or ninth degree polynomial. So let's go ahead and bring it back to what we had. I'm going to just do control Z here. And so now the decision is, do I choose a degree of polynomial three or a degree of polynomial four? In theory, if we come back up here and check out the degree four, it is a better error for both the training set and the test set. However, logically speaking, if we think about the added complexity of relationships of x to the power of four, in general, it's highly unlikely that you're actually getting some sort of signal on x to the power of four for this advertising data set. And this is where domain knowledge comes into play a bit. So if you think about this carefully, is it worth the risk of this added complexity to go for the fourth power when really at best realistically, there could be maybe a third degree interaction term or probably just a secondary in in interaction term? I would wager that you should either choose a second degree polynomial or maybe a third degree. But going up to four, even if the performance here warrants it, is probably not necessary given the fact that you are kind of at the region of risk to immediately explode onto your test root mean squared error. So I'd highly recommend that in this case, we choose something like a second degree or third degree given the data set and given the context of what we're actually working with. Okay, so this is how you can choose a correct or optimal level for your polynomial. Again, take a look at the raw data behavior and also visualize it to make sure you're not overfitting. Coming, coming up next, what we're gonna do is finalize our model choice. We'll go ahead and choose degree is equal to three, and then we'll show you how to not just create the final model, but also save both the polynomial feature converter and your model itself. I'll see you at the next lecture.